past decade, I've had the chance to offer various K-12 outreach opportunities from camps to competitions and after school events. And we've used all kinds of environments in those situations from Alice to App Inventor to Scratch, other languages and environments. In this particular course, we're going to use SNAP. And there's a few reasons why we've chosen SNAP and those will be documented in the FAQ. So you can check out the reasons for that. But in this particular lesson, we'd like to give an overview of the SNAP environment, show you how to get acquainted with, with SNAP and some of the basic things that you'll need in order to do the rest of this unit. As we begin our study of SNAP, it's very useful to get an overview of the whole environment. So the first part that we'll use a lot is the palette area. Sometimes we call this a category. So you can see there are various categories of different blocks that we'll use to build our program from control to operators, sensing motion. You'll become familiar with these over time as we begin to explore this. In the middle area here is the script area and this is where we will drag our programming blocks and create our programs. Over on the right is the stage area. This is where we will have our program execute and visualize some of the animations and some of the parts of our um, SNAP program. At the top, the green arrow, yellow arrow, and red arrow will start our program, pause our program, and also stop the program uh, appropriately. So if we're looking at a very first program, let's um, when, uh, program the idea of just writing someone's name to the screen. So when the green flag is uh, clicked, we would like to ask the user for them to enter their name. So uh, the text actually is already there for us about the user's name. And so then we'd like to be able to say hello and then the person's name. So by default, this block just says hello. We would actually like it to say hello and then their name. So there is a join block which brings two strings of characters together. So there's a hello uh, in the first block and then the second block we will actually put the name that the user enters on the keyboard. So the interesting thing is the way that SNAP does this, there is a general answer variable that stores any input from the user. So we're going to unite the word hello and the, and the name that the, or the answer that the user gave. So if I run this and in the dialog here in the stage area, if I type CSP for HS, our program then will say uh, hello and then whatever name. So hello CSP for HS. So in that case, we have our very first um, hello world or hello C CSP for HS program. So it's uh, useful to be able to uh, save our programs, and there are several ways we can do this. The first one is to export the program as a file onto your local computer. And this is stored as an XML file. So when I save this, this particular file is on my hard drive or my computer somewhere that I've indicated, and I can then pass in this file out. Uh, I can take that generated file and save it anywhere. I'm saving this on my desktop. And I can take this Hello World XML file, it has an extension called XML, and I can email that to someone or share it with someone as a way of showing them our program as well. And so just to test this, I'm going to start a new uh, blank SNAP program. And in this case, I'm going to go and import that previous file that I saved. So if I try to find this here in my desktop amid all this mess, um, there is a Hello World, uh, I just passed it, let's see. Um, if I hello world um, XML file it was just up here, if I click on that, that will then allow me to load that program back in. So that's a way to save your file and, and send it and share it with other people. Another way is you can save your programs um, in the browser. So we'll talk later about the cloud. We won't discuss that right now. But I can save my program in, uh, in a browser, and I've already saved a few here. And just clicking save here will store this very easily in a, in a special place. And I won't need to uh, deal with files explicitly as in the previous export. So in this case, I saved it in the browser. I'm going to go back and now do an open. And I'm going to open in the browser that program I just saved called Hello World. And it loaded back in. So that's a way for you to save and load your programs when you need them. There's also an examples directory when you try to open. So you may want to try some of these snap examples. Let's create, uh, well let's talk next about this this little cloud option. So if you uh, sign up um, on the cloud you'll get an account with um, snap 
where you can create your own username. They'll send you a pass password, and um, you can store your programs out on the cloud as well. And we'll discuss that later when, when we ask you to share your performance task with us. So let's go ahead and create a brand new Scratch program and try one more program in this particular activity. And we're just uh, going to create a simple program that will draw a square onto the screen. So when the green flag is clicked, I want to move my sprite. So the sprite is the object that's moving on the stage. So in this case, it's just that arrow. And I want to make sure that the stage canvas is cleared. And I want to make sure my drawing pen is down. And the next thing I'll do is I will have the sprite while the pin is down, move 50 steps or 50 pixels. And then I will have the um, sprite turn 90 degrees. So if I want to do this for a square, I need to repeat these two blocks four more times. I'm a bit lazy, so I'd rather copy these. So if I right click on the topmost move, and I duplicate, it will duplicate everything below. So duplicated the move and the turn. So now if I do the topmost again, it'll, it'll copy all four of those. So very easily I was able to copy eight blocks by just doing two duplicates. So if I run this, this, this will draw a square that is uh, 50 pixels. As you can see there in the stage area. Well, what if I'd like to make this much more useful in terms of just um, being able to draw more than, than 50 pixels? I want to have some variation here. So I would like to ask the user what what size they would like to have for the side and then I will um, use that answer that the user provides and instead of hard coding the number 50 there I'm taking the answer and placing that in the slot beside um, the move steps. So now if I were to uh, execute or run this program by clicking the green flag if I enter 100 for the, the side of the or number of pixels for each side, I get a, um, a 100 pixel sided square. If I enter 250, I get a larger circle and so on. So this is the, the way that we summarize um, and overview um, the programs uh, we can create in Snap. And I can say this out to the browser. So this is just a general overview of our first encounter with Snap. And we will be discussing a lot more about this in future lessons.